through Spanish? <laughs> yeah, Michael says he can speak Spanish, so we'll let no, no, that no, we no, can no, take no, the no, test. No, I'm not asking <laughs> questions. All right, all right, all right. Uh, <clears throat> for you, you know, you've talked about how the Gasol brothers, Mark Gasol, kind of impacted you. What's this moment like for you to to take it in when you think back to Santi the kid watching the Gasol brothers and now being here to witness this moment? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's pretty cool as a Spanish kid, obviously, but just for me growing up and watching them play, especially Mark, you know. Uh, ju just just being able and having the chance to like be here when we you know putting his jersey up there is, is something that I can't really put into, into words was there a, one of the brothers that you gravitated to more than the other was it pal mark and, and what do you think the biggest differences are between um, Spanish basketball and, and the basketball played in the NBA uh, yeah I mean no uh, they, they were like you know the, the the two main main guys in the national team and obviously every summer you know they would go out there and compete for the country so I would look up to them and like really I want to be like them so just being able to be here today is, is an honor for sure but uh, what was your second part of the question sir oh yeah I mean I think uh, Blevins did a good job with the documentary and you can see it. it's just like wanted to win every single game and you know the the, the passion that Mark had is I think it's you know one of the main features of Spanish basketball and I can really you know relate to that Sati, playing for this front in the back, playing for this franchise where both Mark and Pal play. For you, growing up in Spain, watching him play, has that part always meant maybe a little bit more that you are playing for a franchise where both of these legendary Spanish players have played in the NBA? Yeah, I mean, I think since day one, obviously making it to the NBA is is a child's dream. But like, you know, getting drafted by Memphis and 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 being here since day one and seeing what they've done for the franchise and the city has been awesome. And you know, just being able to talk to them and like kind of see like their life here and now me kind of experiencing that is is incredible and, and like I said it, it just makes it so much more special. Santi in the back growing up in a country dominated by football you know did Mark and Powell kind of give you that inspiration to hey I can go I don't have to be you know, I can be a professional basketball player like they are it's just kind of inspiration growing up in that way. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously I come from a basketball family and I kind of had it tough to be a soccer player anyways. Uh, but yeah, just just them, I think they're legends in basketball, but just legends in sport. And I think anybody, even if you like basketball or not, you really appreciate like what they've done, not only for, for the country, but for the sport. And and yeah, like I said, like having those two figures to like look up to and, and really like trying to model my game uh, after that is, is something I've, I've taken with me my whole career and like you were saying before like just being able to like it, it kind of like sums up everything like tomorrow is going to sum up everything for me. Mark won uh, MVP of the ACB for, for Girona I think the season before he came to the Grizzlies. Were you aware of him as a Spanish league player or were you a little too young for that? Yeah I mean I think I was like seven at the time so like I mean, I definitely remember having basketball on the, in the house and, like, seeing him, but I can't actively, like, remember, like, the games or anything. But, like, obviously him coming into it and, you know, the whole grit and grind Grizzlies, that's, like, that was, like, kind of, like, peak me starting to watch the NBA. So it's, it's something I remember vividly for sure. Do you remember the first time you met Mark? And what was that exchange like? Yeah, I mean, the first time I ever talked to him, yeah, I was, like, it was, like, under 16s. And like, yeah, it was under 16s, and we just went to watch one of their their practices, and it was like, like I I haven't gotten starstruck in my life for sure, but it was like, I mean, just a tall dude that I've always watched, and now I see him in person, it was like kind of like, like, damn, you're real, huh? And it was like, it was super cool. I mean, super normal guy, and as a kid, like you're kind of nervous, and he just made it seem so natural. It was, it was super cool, and then obviously got to see him a couple more times, and and it, I mean, it's it's been super cool, and. You know, yeah, it, I'm super excited for tomorrow. I remember it was last year before you uh, went to uh, the FIBAs. You were telling me that, you know, you were going to go there. Y'all were going to beat Team USA and all that. Um, but kind of going into that perspective of it for you, what was it like witnessing, you're probably too young for 2006 when they wanted to go out there, but if you can recall 2019 uh, when they wanted to go there, uh, Spain, in the World Cups, 
or or even the the Olympic matchups against you know Team USA that were really thrilling. Thrilling. Uh, what was that like for you as a kid? You know, watching in Team USA, Spain go at it, and even when you won uh, the gold medal in the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, I kind of like remember every game like where I was at watching it, and obviously the 2012 Olympics were big, but like the World Cup when uh, where obviously we weren't the favorites, but Mark was a big part of our success. It was like my first year in college. I had just gotten there. So, like I said before, like me going into a new country, like playing a new type of basketball and now being able to watch Mark play and Spain play and like get a gold medal. Like, I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. And, and like I said, it, it's something that I think the good documentary sums up. And like if you guys haven't seen it, I, I recommend it. But like it's it's something that like I think it's more passionate than than actually like you can put into words. Hola Santi, buenos días. Buenos días. Eh, hace cinco años ya que Mark se fue de Memphis, pero te da la sensación de que su figura sigue estando como presente, o sea, se habla de él, vestuarios, ¿qué? ¿Cómo, ¿cómo lo definirías? Sí, a ver, eh, creo que de los jugadores de ahora, Yaren es el único que coincidió con él, y coincidió un poco, pero siempre tiene muchas historias de Mark y, y demás, y, y sobre todo en la ciudad y, y en la organización hay gente que ha coincidido con él, y, y hablan muchísimo de él. Yo creo que el impacto que ha tenido aquí a nivel social, cualquier persona me dice, ah, tú eres de España como Mark, tal, y, y me hablan de eso. Y, y sobre todo en, en la organización él, ha cambiado mucho, pero la gente que, que tuvo la suerte de coincidir con él siempre lo recuerda con, con mucho cariño y, y yo creo que eso habla por sí solo más del jugador que, que ha sido, sobre todo de la persona. Buenas, soy María de Radio Nacional. Me gustaría preguntarte personal y profesionalmente qué significa para ti, en lo bueno y en lo malo, crecer de alguna manera a la sombra de dos figuras como Mark y Pau Gasol. Gracias. Sí, bueno, no, no sé si a la sombra, ¿no? pero con la suerte de haber vivido la experiencia o, o tener, haber visto la experiencia que han, que han acumulado ellos, poder vivirla como, como fan y ahora como, pues como, no sé cómo ponerlo, pero como después de ellos, ¿no? Eh, yo, yo creo que, que es algo muy bonito, eh, tengo la suerte, como todos nosotros, de haberles visto jugar y ahora, por así decirlo, vivir parte de su legado y, y, y aprovecharme de ello en el buen sentido de, de la palabra. Y, y como digo, poder verlo mañana por la noche va a ser muy especial, pero, pero sobre todo compartir momentos así y, y ver cómo, cómo puedo aprender de ellos y, y, y de lo que han dejado. Santi, si hablamos de baloncesto, ¿quién te ha inspirado más en el juego, Pau o Marc? Eh, yo, yo creo que te diría un poco de cada igual físicamente soy un poco más similar a Pau eh, pero, pero bueno, yo creo que la visión de juego de Mar que es, es impecable y es algo que, que siempre me ha gustado mucho eh, al final yo crecí jugando con mis amigos y, y yo siempre que veía la selección eso era lo que sentía, ¿no? todo lo que hablamos de la familia era un poco la sensación que, que transmitía y sobre todo con Mark y, y, y un poco el juego que, que, ¿no? que evolucionó una vez yo aquí yo creo que el, el obviamente ser agresivo, pero el buscar siempre el, el mejor tiro para el equipo es algo que, que me gusta eh, hacer y que me gusta ver y, y que aprendí de él, desde luego. Hola, aquí Francesc Garriga, Cataluña Radio. Um, tanto Pau como Marc uh, hicieron parecer que la NBA era como más cercana para alguien en España, ¿no? Si, si habías nacido en los 80, era casi como imposible soñar con, con jugar en la NBA. ¿Tú crees que ahora los chavales jóvenes, <coughs> habiendo visto toda esta generación con Pau, con Marc, ¿Ven la NBA como algo un poco más accesible que no habría sido antes? Sí, y, y yo creo que parte de eso es, es gracias a ellos, ¿no? El, yo creo que la NBA se ha ido globalizando y ahora pues con Instagram y todo esto es mucho más fácil llegar, pero, pero yo creo que el verles a ellos y, y ser personas tan cercanas y, y gente con la que puedes tener algo en común y verles jugar aquí y, y seguir siendo tan suyos, eh, y, y verle jugar en la pista y, y, y verle jugar como jugaban con la selección, yo creo que es algo que para, para alguien de España significa mucho y, y piensas, pues oye, yo también puedo estar ahí. Y eso es un poco como me lo he tomado yo y viéndoles jugar, yo siempre decía, bueno, quiero jugar en la NBA y también quiero jugar en la selección como ellos y, y ahora que puedo hacerlo es, es, es un orgullo enorme, pero, pero yo creo que parte de eso también es gracias a ellos por hacernos sentir que, que podemos llegar. Miguel Jiménez de Diario El País. Yo quería preguntarte por ti. Eh, ¿Qué balance haces de esta temporada y qué perspectivas tienes? 
Sí, bueno, a, a nivel colectivo creo que ha sido una temporada complicada, con muchos altibajos, lesiones y demás. Y obviamente no estamos en la situación que, que queríamos estar en este momento del año, eso no es ningún secreto. Pero, pero bueno, creo que al final todo es aprendizaje. Eh, creo que nos pone en una situación eh, para seguir mejorando y el año que viene se, competir por playoff como habíamos hecho estos últimos años y, y último, o sea, llegar al anillo, que es lo que queremos. Y personalmente, pues, pues más de lo mismo. Ha sido una temporada con altibajos, diferentes roles, diferentes situaciones, pero en las que he podido aprender mucho. Eh, creo que he dado un paso al frente, pero bueno, también creo que me queda muchísimo por mejorar y, y por eso tengo muchas ganas de este verano de, de tener tiempo para mejorar en, en mi juego y seguir viendo cómo aportar y sobre todo jugar ese preolímpico y, y conseguir el billete para las Olimpiadas. That's a, that's the toughest question today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said a little bit of both. Uh, I would say maybe physically I'm more similar to Pal, but like Mark's core vision is something I've I've always liked, and and that's something I take pride in. You know. Uh, getting the best shot for the team in every single possession, and and you know that that's why I think it's maybe a combination of both, or or maybe not a combination, but just I've been inspired by both for sure. Do you like doing this in Spanish or English? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think I've done more English interviews. That's why. <laughs> but Spanish is a better language. <laughs>